Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. In this episode, we're going to build a building using a 3D printer. If you like learning about building a miniature, please remember to subscribe. In last week's project, we switched over to kind of a Cold War theme. So I built something reminiscent of the Berlin Wall. And I did this using molded plaster. Working with plaster isn't something I do very often, so I thought this would be an interesting change. This week I decided to both stick with the Cold War theme and also go along with using techniques that I haven't used previously. So I decided I was going to use my 3D printer and create something that was sort of complementary to the Berlin Wall theme. Naturally, then, I decided that I was going to make Checkpoint Charlie, the famous checkpoint where uh, people would stop on their way into East Berlin during the Cold War. But the issue is, Checkpoint Charlie actually is pretty boring. It's a white wooden hut, and that's about it. So I knew I would have to embellish it. So I'm not building an exact replica of Checkpoint Charlie, but I'm going to build something similar that suits my terrain spread. Remember that the terrain and models that I feature in my videos are often available on my Etsy store. The link to the store is in the description. And as a special reward for subscribers to my channel, I'm going to include a discount code at the end of this video. Any proceeds from your purchases will go to supporting the channel. Let's get to it! To start the project, I went to Tinkercad.com and began to design the building. So it's a pretty small hut, so I ruled it out to be about 3 centimeters wide by 6 centimeters long. Once I had designed each of the components, I went ahead and exported it as an STL file. Because there were more parts for this project than I had space on my printer's build plate, I had to import them in sections. Here you can see the miscellaneous components, but I also had to do separate prints for the walls, the roof, and the gables. After I got them loaded up in my slicing software, I sliced them, saved them to a USB drive, and took them to the printer. Altogether, it probably took two to three hours to print all the components on my printer. And as they came out, I took them off the build plate and, as always, cleaned them in rubbing alcohol as per the manufacturer's instructions. Now, to be completely honest, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with my 3D printer. Here's my first iteration of the build, and, well, everything came out completely smooth. I guess I made a mistake when deciding how much detail to put on the exterior of the wall sections. Fortunately, my second time around, I did a good job and got the wall sections textured nicely with some wood paneling. At this point, it was time to dry fit the parts. And putting them together without glue, I noticed that a lot of them didn't fit exactly perfectly. So donning my dust mask and getting out my needle files, I began filing the parts until they fit. With the filing done, I wanted to make sure that uh, no resin dust interfered with the gluing process, so I washed each of the components in water and then sprayed them off with my airbrush to both dry them and blow away any leftover residue. While the resin parts were drying, I decided it was time to build the base. So I ruled out the location on the base where the hut was going to go, and I cut the base out to be 9 centimeters wide by about 17 centimeters long. And then I went and ruled in a 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter grid work on the base, and then scored in the grid work using the tip of a pen. This is to create a city street texture that I use on the rest of my urban area of my spread. By now the resin had dried, so I go in along one wall section 
and I put down some hot glue, place the wall in place, trying to make sure everything was square. Then grabbing a front panel, I ran glue along the seam, along the side. Tested the fit to make sure everything was square. Then ran a bead of hot glue along the bottom. And pushed it back into place so I could let the super glue dry. I then went ahead and repeated all of this with the other wall sections and then applied super glue to the roof tiles and placed them as well. When that was all done, I grabbed some super glue accelerant and I sprayed the model down just so I knew everything was well bonded. Now it's time to build the sandbags to go on either side of the hut. So I grab two cutoffs from some pink styrofoam and these are about a centimeter wide by about 10 centimeters long. I sand them flat and then going two centimeters in from either end, I cut 45 degrees through them. I do it on both sides. Then taking hot glue, I flip the end over and glue it back onto the main part so that one end or the ends curve back from 45 degrees from the front. Then grabbing my big file, I round off the edges. I only do this on the top side, I don't need to do it on the bottom. And I cut a step pattern into the ends. And I round those off too. Then taking a pen, I go and score a pattern of sandbags into the uh, styrofoam itself. With the sandbags made, I glue them into place at each end of the base. And I follow this up by super gluing some small details into place, such as these jerry cans and buckets along the side of the building itself. This establishes scale and increases visual interest. And then I can move on to the grit. So as always, I'm going to use the isopropyl rubbing alcohol method for applying the grit. So I start by pouring out some rubbing alcohol. And it doesn't have to be a high percentage one, pretty well any type of uh, rubbing alcohol will work for this. Then I take some black acrylic ink and I put that into the rubbing alcohol and stir it up. This adds pre-shading to the grit and works as insurance in case the uh, white glue separates from the acrylic glue. And so here I'm taking my white glue, watering it down pretty heavily. And I put a couple drops of black acrylic paint in it. And then taking the white glue mixture, I go ahead and start brushing it into the areas where I want the grit. And in this case, I want it kind of patchy, clustered around the building, sort of disguising where the building joins to the base and uh, in around the sandbags. Then when the glue is down, I grab my... Uh, mixture of 80% sand, sandbox sand, to 20% kitty litter, and uh, I start applying it just in rough patches right over top of the glue. Now I switch to the rubbing alcohol mixture, and you want to do this while the glue is still wet on the sand, and I just go and apply the rubbing alcohol right over top. And that breaks the surface tension so that when you run more glue in, it uh, flows freely. So now I go back to the watered down white glue with a pipette and I just drop it right over top of where I've applied the rubbing alcohol. So it's the next day and the grit has dried. Everything's stuck down nicely. So I load my airbrush with some black spray primer. 
Then I go ahead and prime the model and the whole base. After the primer is dry, I switch to Panzer Dark Gray in my airbrush. Then after that, I layer on some light gray. Then I layer on some white and light gray mix of about 50-50, focusing on the edges of the model. And then finally, I go to just a pure white dry brush on the outside to accentuate the details. Now I move on to the roof by dry brushing it a couple shades of brown, moving lighter up to a tan color. Getting out an enamel dark wash, I move on to shading. And this is really just a, a black or dark brown enamel paint that's been heavily thinned down. And I just dab it into the corners and where the shading is required and let capillary action do the work. Then afterwards I get out a flat brush and some thinner and I erase any mistakes or any tide marks I've created. Going to the base, I dry brush the uh, concrete tiles, a couple shades of gray, first a dark gray and then I move to a light gray. Then with the dark brown, I dry brush the dirt effects and all of the grit where it's built up along the sides of the base and along the sides of the building. And then I move on to a couple lighter shades, always dry brushing, starting with darker colors and moving to lighter colors. As always, a lot of dry brushing wipes out the uh, definition and details. So I pour out some black acrylic ink and taking a fine brush, I go back in and uh, line in the edges of the tiles and around some of the finer details on the base so that they stand out with a little relief to the viewer. It was now time to work on the sandbags. So I started with a coat of olive gray. Moved on to a dry brush of Africa Core Tank Crew and finally dry brushed with a highlight of middle stone. Getting out some brighter paints now, I went on and painted the details on the model, such as this red bike, and also got out a series of enamels and oils and blended them into the surface of the hut to form weathering. Moving to landscaping, I took some watered down white glue and some lichens and glued them into various spots on the model. I wanted this to have kind of a city feel, but I wanted to add some greenery to color to it. And uh, also I needed to cover up a few issues with the uh, way the sandbags fit with the base. So the lichens came in handy and I applied a couple very small patches of static grass. Now I'm at the final step. So as always, I coat the model with two layers of matte varnish to protect it from handling, and since it's a wargaming piece, it will inevitably endure some wear and tear. And with that, this project is finished. Here's the final result. I'm pretty happy with the outcome, considering this is my first attempt at making buildings with my 3D printer. I'll be sure to do this more in the future. This will look right at home on my urban battlefield and evokes the Cold War vibe I was going for in the first place. So, as promised, I wanted to offer my uh, viewers something special at the end of this video. So I'm extending an Etsy coupon to my viewers. All you need to do is enter MLH20 off, all in uppercase, or take the link from the video description down below. You can use that to get 20% off anything in my web store on Etsy. That includes a lot of the uh, terrain projects that you see on the channel and uh, some of the models that I've made. So 
check it out, please. It's a way to support the channel. If uh, Etsy is not your thing, you can also check out my link to my Patreon account, or you can use the supply links below. Anything you do helps support the channel and it's much appreciated. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please stay tuned for new content twice weekly. I have moved video releases to Tuesdays and, as always, on Thursdays. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for regular model building, miniature painting, and diorama content. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure you do, and press the bell button to receive immediate notifications so you do not have to miss out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature. Thank you.